How to Buy a Friend begins with Park Chan Hong, a nerd student who lived with his parents, neither poor nor rich. That day, he went to school using his bicycle. At school, there was a female student named Eum Se Yoon who Chan Hong had liked for a long time, though he didn't dare to express his feelings and just kept it to himself. Not long after that, a delinquent named Kim Dae Yong showed up. He was a school bully who targeted weak students like Chan Hong and there wasn't a single student who dared to fight him. Dae Yong was also Chan Hong's classmate. That morning, Chan Hong had an art class and his teacher told him and the rest of the class to write poetry. So all the students immediately started, but Chan Hong and his close friend, Kyun Pyo, had no single idea to write. But then they got the idea to copy song lyrics, thinking the teacher wouldn't find out. When they were doing their assignment, the teacher approached them to check on their work. And after reading it, the teacher was amazed and praised the poetry that had a deep meaning in every sentence, not knowing it was all but song lyrics. During the break, Shan Hong and Kyung Pio were spending their time when they saw Se Yoon who looked sad. But she immediately left when Chan Hong approached her, leaving him and Kyung Pio confused. After Se Yoon left, Kyung Pio told Chan Hong that three months ago, a female student named So Jung died after committing suicide by jumping from the roof of the school building and falling right where Se Yoon was crying earlier. Kyung Pio knew Se Yoon was related to So Jung and felt suspicious that Se Yoon had something to do with So Jung's death. There were rumors that before Se Jung committed suicide, she had a blind date with someone. When the police investigated her death to find the cause, they were unable to find any evidence, even So Jung's cell phone. The police concluded that So Jung committed suicide due to stress and depression due to her failing test scores. Hearing this, Chan Hong asked why he didn't know about this case. Kyung Pyo answered that it happened before Chan Hong had an accident which resulted in memory loss. Chan Hong felt a little annoyed with Kyung Pyo who felt suspicious that Se Yoon was the perpetrator so he tried to defend Se Yoon by saying that she couldn't possibly be the one who did that. When they went to the canteen after that, a classmate came to convey a message that the art teacher asked Chan Hong to meet him in the teacher's office. Hearing this, Chan Hong quickly went straight to meet the teacher. Apparently, the art teacher wanted to ask him to be a representative at the inter-school poetry contest. Chan Hong panicked because he couldn't write poetry at all, yet he didn't dare to refuse it. Kyung Pyo was proud that Chan Hong would be a representative of the school. Chan Hong panicked and wanted to confess to the teacher that the beautiful poem he wrote was just a copy of the song lyrics, following Kyung Pyo's idea, but Kyung Pyo stopped him because they would get into a problem if he confessed. While they were in the hallway, the two accidentally saw a woman who wanted to transfer her son to the school and heard the lady mention the name Hyu Don Hyuk. Kyung Pyo was shocked because Don Hyuk was an infamous cruel delinquent from the neighboring school. It was even rumored that he was able to beat 10 people in a fistfight. He was thrown into juvenile prison and would be released in a few days, so Kyung Pyo warned Chan Hong never to have anything to do with Don Hyuk in any way. The next day, Chan Hong met the art teacher to cancel his participation in the art contest, reasoning that he was not ready to take part in the contest. Hearing this, the teacher immediately called Si Yoon, who happened to be nearby and asked her to provide support for Chan Hong, who would be the school representative in the competition. It turned out that she was also the school's representative in the painting competition. She immediately shook Chan Hong's hands while Chan Hong trembled when he shook hands with her. Even so, he was very happy because he was able to get to know the woman he had always admired. In the end, Chan Hong decided not to cancel this participation so that he could get close to Se Yoon. In the evening, Chan Hong diligently practiced writing poetry so he could win the contest. Even his mother seeing him was a little surprised by the change in her son. The day of the competition arrived. Chan Hong intended to meet Se Yoon and the art teacher. But when he arrived, he saw Se Yoon smoking. Of course, he was surprised and Se Yoon herself immediately put out the cigarette. Things got awkward when Se Yoon said that she didn't like a nerd like Chan Hong. Hearing this, Chan Hong was just silent at the insult, but Se Yoon realized that her words were too harsh, so she immediately apologized to him. Not long after that, the teacher came and took them to the venue. The competition began and the jury gave each participant three hours to make their work. They were allowed to walk around the building to get ideas. Instead of looking for ideas, Se Yoon went to play in the snow as if she didn't care about the contest. Likewise with Chan Hong, who joined her. After playing around for quite a while, Chan Hong reminded her to start her work because the competition would soon be over. Hearing this, Se Yoon said that she didn't care and had no intention of winning the contest because her parents never allowed her to be an artist, but when Chan Hong asked whether she liked art or not, she just kept silent as if implicitly saying that she actually liked art. Thanks to Chan Hong, Se Yoon felt motivated to continue studying art, and this was where the two of them started to get closer. After that, the two of them went back into the building to start doing their work. Se Yoon started to paint while Pak Chong started writing a poem. 
When Chen Hong was about to write, he suddenly remembered his sentence and immediately wrote that sentence into his work. Surprisingly, they both managed to win the contest. Their work was immediately displayed on the school wall so that everyone could see it. Stay Yun and Chan Hong were very happy because they could make their school proud. But when Sei Yun saw Chan Hong's poetry, she was very surprised because in the poetry was a sentence from So Jung before she committed suicide. She immediately asked where it came from and Chan Hong said that the sentence was created from his own idea. Hearing this, Sei Yun said that she wanted to be Chan Hong's close friend, which of course made Chan Hong smile happily because he could be by her side, not realizing that Sei Yun only wanted to know the truth about where he got So Jung's last words. Since then, they both often hung out to study together. That night, Sei Yun was trying to work up the courage to open a box where in the box was a cell phone that unexpectedly belonged to So Jung. It was revealed that the reason why the police couldn't find the cell phone was because she had it with her. She opened the cell phone and was shocked to find a video of So Jung being raped. There was even a threat that asked So Jung to send some money otherwise the video would be spread. She cried hysterically when she realized that the reason So Jung committed suicide was due to depression after being raped and threatened by an unknown someone. The next day, the students were surprised by the news about Don Hyuk being transferred to their school. Chan Hong could only tremble in terror knowing that there would be two delinquents in his class after finding out that Don Hyuk ended up in the same class as him. Meanwhile, Dae Gyeong was seen bullying some students and after that, he approached Chan Hong's desk and kicked the chair that Don Hyuk was going to sit on. What a coincidence because Don Hyuk came to the class at that moment. Don Hyuk looked at his table which had been overturned when Dae Gyeong challenged him to fight. He ignored the challenge because he didn't want to cause any trouble on his first day at school. He decided to leave the class to avoid commotion. After Don Hyuk left, Dae Gyeong asked Chan Hong to come with him to the canteen. He gave Chan Hong a lot of bread, not because he was kind, but so that Chan Hong would introduce him to Sei Yun. Chan Hong didn't say a thing because he didn't want to introduce this delinquent to the woman he loved, but then Dae Yang threatened to beat him if he refused. Afraid, like it or not, Chan Hong was forced to fulfill his wish. That night, Sei Yun messaged Chan Hong to meet at a cafe. Her purpose in inviting him to meet was because she wanted to talk about So Jung. Sei Yun confided that she was always haunted by the death of her best friend. However, she always tried to forget it so that her life could feel calm, but it was very difficult for her to do so, so she asked for advice from him on how to deal with this problem. Even though he didn't understand what Sei Yun had just said, Chan Hong said that no matter what happened, being happy was all but her decision. This brief moment was able to make her smile again and she even praised Chan Hong who always motivated her. The next day in class, Di Yang, as usual, bullied a student in his class. Suddenly, he approached Chan Hong and beat him. Apparently, he was very annoyed with Chan Hong because he had met Si Yun last night. Don Hyuk was there but he was just silent while Chan Hong was beaten badly by Dae Yang. Dae Yang ordered Chan Hong to introduce him to Si Yun if he didn't want to be beaten up, and because he was afraid, Chan Hong agreed. That very night, Chan Hong messaged Si Yun to ask to meet so he could meet her with Dae Yang, then he changed his mind and called Si Yun not to come, but he was too late because Si Yun had arrived. He immediately grabbed her hand and asked her to leave. But unfortunately, when he was about to leave, Dae Yang came and stopped them. Because he was afraid of Dae Yang and because he also got a phone call from his mother who told him to go home immediately, he decided to leave the two of them in the cafe. Of course, this disappointed Sei Yun. When he got home, Chan Hong went into his room to cry because he had betrayed Sei Yun. Not only that, he also felt very upset because he didn't have the courage to stand up for himself. The next day at school, Chan Hong was beaten by Dae Yang. Don Hyuk was there, witnessing the bullying yet didn't make a move to help even though he actually felt sorry for Chan Hong and really wanted to help. He just couldn't because he didn't want to cause trouble. He decided to leave the class and took a walk in the hallway until he saw the poetry written by Chan Hong. He was very surprised to see it. It was then revealed that he was So Jung's boyfriend. He suspected that Chan Hong had something to do with his girlfriend's death. He immediately went to look for Chan Hong to ask for all the truth. Meanwhile, Chan Hong was being dragged and beaten badly by Dae Yang. Don Hyuk came to beat Dae Yang to save Chan Hong, but after that, he dragged Chan Hong to the roof of the school building and forced him to tell where he got the lines in his poetry. Hearing this, Chan Hong could only remain silent. Don Hyuk got angry because he suspected that Chan Hong had something to do with So Jung's death. He then dropped Chan Hong from the school roof. Somewhere else, a woman named Jo Pyong Su was seen meeting a councilman to bribe him so that she could be nominated as mayor, so she could cover up all her illegal business of trafficking women. Hearing this, the councilman agreed with the condition that she had to find someone for him. The councilman then gave an email address in the name of Mithra Terror. Back to Chan Hong. 
Fortunately, he fell to a balloon and was saved. Since then, he became even more uncomfortable because there were two delinquents who would bother him in his class. During class that day, Don Hyok gave a letter to Chan Hong inviting him to meet. After the class was over, he was threatened to follow Don Hyok to a rundown apartment that turned out to be where Din Hyok lived. Chan Hong was scared, thinking that Don Hyok would torture him. However, it turned out that Don Hyok just wanted to know where he got So Jung's last words that he wrote in his poetry. Scared of what Don Hyok would do to him, Chan Hong told him that before So Jung died, he saw her holding her cell phone with an Ironman ring looking sad in the school field. But that was all he could remember because he had amnesia and lost the rest of it. In the middle of the conversation, the landlady screamed from outside wanting to collect the rent from Don Hyuk. Don Hyuk asked her for time because he didn't have the money to pay for it yet, but luckily, Chan Hong immediately gave the lady the money to pay the rent, and in return, he asked Don Hyuk to let him go and never involve him in So Jung's death because he didn't know anything and didn't want to be deeply involved in it. After saying that, he immediately left there, but Don Hyuk chased him and finally came clean about everything. The sentence written in the poetry was the last sentence that So Jung ever sent to him before she died. At that time, So Jung was involved in a scandal and her photos had spread everywhere and became the talk of the school. He knew that her girlfriend would do it and there was someone who tried to ruin her life. After So Jung committed suicide, he started looking for the person who distributed the photo, but unfortunately, he couldn't find the person because there wasn't a single clue. He tried to look for So Jung's cell phone so he could get a clue but to no avail. Therefore, he asked Chan Hong to help him find out what happened before So Jung committed suicide so that he could find the one responsible for it, and in return, he would protect him from the school bullies. Unfortunately, Chan Hong refused because he didn't want to get involved with So Jung's death. At the same time, Si Yun intended to contact Chan Hong and ask him to meet, but she cancelled her intention because she was still disappointed with Chan Hong who had ghosted him when he needed him. She then looked at the photo of her and So Jung, which made her remember her past with So Jung. At that time, So Jung met her and asked her not to believe all the gossip that was circulating at school, but at that time, she ignored So Jung. So Jung became depressed because no one believed her, including her own best friend, until finally she decided to commit suicide. After So Jung died, Si Yoon was shocked to find So Jung's cell phone in her locker. From that moment, she always felt very guilty towards So Jung because she didn't trust her. Shortly after, Se Yoon was shocked when he heard So Jung's cell phone suddenly ring. She immediately checked it, hoping that the ring of the phone came from the perpetrator who framed So Jung. But when checked, it was a message from someone about an advertisement for an online dating site. Se Yoon, who was curious, opened the link, but the site couldn't be accessed. It was revealed that the message came from Pyong Su, who wanted to find So Jung's cell phone because. After managing to find the location due to Seiyun having accessed the phishing link earlier, she immediately ordered her lackey, Kwok Sum Pill, to get the cell phone. She did that because she didn't want her illegal business to be destroyed because it turned out that on So Jung's cell phone was a video recording showing her women trafficking business. It was also revealed that So Jung was also one of her victims. Meanwhile, Chan Hong was contemplating and feeling guilty towards Seiyun. He thought that he had to build the courage to fight the bullies so that he could protect the woman he admired, but unfortunately, his intention was nothing but nonsense, because he didn't dare to fight back when he was beaten by Di Yan again. When Chan Hong was in the cafeteria, he immediately looked away because he felt guilty when he looked at Se Yoon. While Se Yoon who saw him was saddened by the change in Chan Hong who tried to avoid her. A few days later, Chan Hong and Kyung Pyo were busy looking for So Jung's lost cell phone. The reason they were looking for it was so that they could reveal So Jung's death so that Don Hyuk wouldn't bother him again, but unfortunately, they couldn't find it. While looking for it, Kyum Pyo said that he had found a cigarette butt that was thrown away by the perpetrator who hit Chan Hong in the accident that caused him to lose his memory and most likely, the person had something to do with So Jung's death. They didn't realize that their conversation was heard by Don Hyuk, who was standing behind them. He then told Kyum Pyo to tell him the story. And because he was afraid, Kyung Pyo told him everything. They decided to go to a cafe to discuss So Jung's death further, but Chan Hong decided to go home because he didn't want to get too involved in this problem. In the evening, Sun Pil had gathered some delinquents from different high schools and Dae Yong was also seen there. Apparently, the reason Sun Pil gathered them was because he wanted to ask for help in finding a pink cell phone that belonged to So Jung. He gave them a list of names who were suspected of having the cell phone. Dae Yang was very surprised when he saw that Se Yoon's name was on the list. The next day, Pyong Su visited Chan Hong's school to give donations for the art class with the hidden intention of getting So Jung's cell phone that Se Yoon kept with her. 
She then called Seiyun and threatened her so that she would give the cell phone, and despite the fear, Seiyun refused to say anything. After Pyong Su left, Seiyun invited Myra, her close friend, to discuss So Jung's death. She said that she was curious about So Jung's post about a dating site and suspected that So Jung was not the one who posted it. But for some reason, Myra said that she was sure that So Jung was the one who posted it because the photo and name were indeed hers. Hearing that, Seiyun felt suspicious that Myra had something to do with So Jung's death. However, Myra immediately diverted the conversation so that Seiyun wouldn't suspect her. Seiyun intended to tell Myra that she had So Jung's cell phone with her, but suddenly, Myra got a message from someone and immediately left. When Seiyun was about to go back to class, she was confronted by Daeyang, who forced her to give So Jung's cell phone to him, and of course she refused, leading to Daeyang forcing her to give it. Shortly after, Chan Hong came and saw everything. But he just kept quiet because he was afraid to fight Di Yang, but when Di Yang dared to slap Si Yun, he immediately called Don Hyuk to agree to the deal offered to him before. After that, he took a brick and hit Di Yang from behind. Unfortunately, Di Yang didn't faint and got up again to beat him, but luckily, Don Hyuk came to help. After that, Don Hyuk took Chan Hong to the infirmary to treat his bruises. Chan Hong was still shocked and scared to the point that his whole body was shaking. He asked Don Hyuk how not to be afraid and Don Hyuk said that he had to overcome all his fears. He also told him to express his feelings for Seiyun because he knew that he liked her. Harboring feelings for someone and keeping it was very painful. That night, when Don Hyuk was walking home, he recalled the time when he was arguing with So Jung. At that moment, he was feeling annoyed with So Jung and wanted to ask for an explanation from her regarding the bad rumors about her. But So Jung, who was depressed, didn't even want to explain it because she thought that he wouldn't believe her too. She even went as far as asking for a breakup without the slightest explanation. That was the last night he met her because she was found dead the next day. He regretted ever doubting her. The next day, Chan Hong was seen waiting for Seiyun to go to school together. Not long after that, she came but she just kept walking and tried to ignore him. But deep down, she was happy because Chan Hong tried to save her from Daeyeon the other day. Chan Hong immediately stopped her to express his love. Steyun smiled happily because finally Chan Hong had expressed his love for her, and she accepted him. One day, Chan Hong asked Seiyun to go to the beach. When they got there, Steyun asked where Chan Hong got the inspiration for his poetry. She came clean about why she was so curious about that. She revealed that the sentence in his poetry was So Jung's last words before she died. Not only that, she then told him the secret that she kept So Jung's cell phone in her house. Chan Hong was surprised because the thing he had been looking for turned out to be at her house. She then gave him the cell phone. After that, Chan Hong told Kyung Pyo that he got the cell phone and Kyung Pyo was shocked. He wanted to give it to Don Hyuk, but Chan Hong forbade him because they would be in big trouble if Don Hyuk found out. Kyung Pyo became curious about the reason So Jung committed suicide, so he invited Chan Hong to investigate this case using clues from the cell phone. Chan Hong agreed. They opened So Jung's cell phone to find out the last person who had contacted her. Even though Kyung Pyo wasn't very good at hacking, it didn't take long for him to find the person. He was a college student with a tattoo on his left leg. Knowing this, they both intend to meet that person. The next day, they were in the infirmary pretending to be sick so they could get permission to go home, but suddenly, Don Hyuk came and pretended to be sick too. It turned out that before they came there, Kyung Pyo deliberately invited Don Hyuk to investigate this case. After getting permission to go home, the three of them immediately went to find the person. When they got there, the two of them went to the art class to look for a student who had a tattoo on his left leg, but the search was stopped because the lecturer came to class to teach, and the three had to attend the class so as not to be suspected. After the art class finished, the three went to search again. Shortly after, Chan Hong saw a student who matched the target, so he approached him to ask about So Jung. Seeing the panicked look on the man's face, Chan Hong immediately gave a code to Don Hyuk. Don Hyuk got mad and beat the man. Unfortunately, they got the wrong person because the man didn't have a tattoo on his left leg. When they realized it, they were in the middle of a football match and they were hit by the players. That was when Chan Hong accidentally dropped So Jung's phone and unfortunately, Don Hyuk saw it and thought that Chan Hong had been lying to him this entire time. Somewhere else, Myra was seen chatting with someone when suddenly, she panicked when she received a message from someone named Mithra, saying that she was the one who killed So Jung. Flashback when Don Hyuk was still in prison. He was visited by a close friend named who was Pyong Su's lackey in the main timeline, Sung Pil. He came there to tell Don Hyuk that his girlfriend So Jung had opened a call girl service on an online dating site. Don Hyuk refused to believe what he said because he knew very well that his girlfriend wouldn't do it, but Sung Pil tried to convince him. 
He said this because he still cared about Don Hyuk. Hearing this, Don Hyuk got angry and beat him because he couldn't accept some pill saying bad things about his girlfriend. This was the end of their friendship and Don Hyuk has never had another visit from Sung Pil. Back to the present, Don Hyuk and Chan Hong were arrested after causing a commotion at the university. They were the only ones arrested because Kyung Pio managed to escape. The police asked them to call their parents and not long after, both of Chan Hong's parents came too, but not Don Hyuk's parents didn't come to the police station. Chan Hong's parents worried about him, especially since his face was bruised. The police asked Chan Hong's mother to pay more attention to his son, and informed the mother that Don Hyuk had been to prison before. The mother was shocked that she did not expect her son to be hanging out with a boy like Don Hyuk, but then, Don Hyuk bowed his head to apologize while admitting it was his fault that he had invited Chan Hong to be friends with him. The mother was touched by his politeness and refused to believe what the police said about Don Hyuk. Soon after, they were allowed to leave the police station. Because Don Hyuk's mother didn't come, Chan Hong's parents invited Don Hyuk to stay at their house because it was late. Don Hyuk agreed, but not with Chan Hong, who showed a worried face. He was worried that Don Hyuk would beat him after finding out that he had So Jung's cell phone. When they arrived home, Chan Hong's parents welcomed Don Hyuk very warmly by serving him dinner. While having dinner, Chan Hong secretly messaged Kyung Pio to come to his house, but unfortunately, Kyung Pio refused because he knew that Don Hyuk was there. After that, Don Hyuk went into Chan Hong's room and sure enough, Don Hyuk beat Chan Hong who had lied to him. Chan Hong immediately apologized while explaining everything that Se Yoon was the one who had given him the cell phone. She had it because So Jung had deliberately put it in Se Yoon's locker before she died. Fortunately, Don Hyuk believed it and immediately let go of him. The next day in class, Chan Hong, Kyung Pyo, and Don Hyuk were punished by the teacher because they were caught skipping school. When they were doing their punishment, Kyung Pyo mentioned the rumors about So Jung that many students believe yet not a single student had proven the truth. Don Hyuk denied the accusations and thought that So Jung had actually been kidnapped and raped by someone, which was why he was still looking for that person to reveal everything and to clear So Jung's name from the bad rumors. Chan Hong immediately told Don Hyuk about the post that So Jung uploaded on an online dating website indicating that he didn't believe anything that Don Hyuk said earlier, considering that the post was uploaded using So Jung's name and photo. After cleaning up, Chan Hong went to the teacher's room to collect his poetry assignment. The teacher was very impressed and proud of him. His teacher then told him that the late So Jung was also a great writer like him. In fact, he still kept So Jung's writings to this day to remember her. His teacher then gave him some of So Jung's poetry to use as a reference in writing his new poetry. And after coming home, he read the poems and began to feel that there was something strange in them. He then went straight to Don Hyuk's house to tell him. When he got there, he immediately explained to Don Hyuk that he had Si Jong's poems with him, and he felt a lot of oddities after reading them. They then tried to match them with the posts that had been uploaded by So Jung, believing that it was someone else who uploaded the post and not So Jung. Don Hyuk asked Chan Hong to come out for a moment because he wanted to read his girlfriend's poetry alone. When he read it, he immediately cried hysterically because his girlfriend always talked about him in her poetry. After that, he met Chan Hong, who was waiting for him. The two of them went back to discussing So Jung's strange death. They both thought that the person who had used So Jung's account was definitely someone who knew her. The next day, Don Hyuk got a new clue after matching the poetry with So Jung's posts. The people who used So Jung's account always included the name of the famous cafe near them, meaning that people who had used So Jung's account must be around them, but they still didn't know who the person was. After that, Chan Hong quietly went to the teacher's office to take some of So Jung's poetry again, but unfortunately, the art teacher showed up. Luckily, Don Hyuk distracted the teacher and Chan Hong managed to do his job. After school, Don Hyuk, Chan Hong, and Kyung Pio started analyzing every piece of writing in So Jung's poetry to look for more clues. After reading for quite some time, the three finally found a clue that led to Myra, so they planned to meet Myra to find the truth. The next day, when Chan Hong was walking in the school hallway looking for Myra, he saw Dae Yong beating students. Amid the commotion, he saw a student who was often bullied by Dae Yong, a Sundu carrying a box cutter, intended to kill Dae Yong. Seeing this, Chan Hong immediately stopped him, but instead of thanking Chan Hong, Dae Yong instead beat him up. When Chan Hong was about to be beaten, Don Hyuk suddenly came and hit Dae Yong while saying that he should be grateful to Chan Hong, who saved his life. Hearing this, Dae Yong fell silent because he was afraid to fight Don Hyuk. Chan Hong and Sung Du were taken to the infirmary for treatment. Sung Du thanked Chan Hong for stopping him earlier because if he ended up killing Dae Yong, he might have been arrested by the police and imprisoned. 
As a thank you, he gave important information to Chan Han that Di Yang was targeting Se Yun, whom he thought was holding So Jung's cell phone. This put worry in Chan Hong's heart. Soon after, the recess bell was heard. Chan Hong, Hyung Pyo, and Don Hyak were seen opening So Jung's cell phone to look for new clues. The three of them checked every single application, but not a single clue was found until they opened the calculator. They entered a code and found lots of videos stored inside the app. They were shocked when they found that there was a video showing Pyong Su's women trafficking business, and they finally realized that the reason So Jung committed suicide was because Pyong Su and that the woman was targeting Si Yun to get rid of her too to save her business. Knowing this, Don Hyuk intended to look for Pyong Su to take revenge for the death of his girlfriend, but Chan Hong forbade it because it was too dangerous. They, including Se Yoon, would be dragged into it, but Don Hyuk, who couldn't hold his anger anymore, insisted on taking revenge and Chan Hong couldn't stop him. On the other hand, Pyong Su was scolding Sung Pil who couldn't manage to get So Jung's cell phone. She threatened him to get it immediately because she didn't want her business to be published during the mayoral election. At school, Meiro was seen approaching Se Yoon and her other friends to ask them to take a selfie. Apparently, Meira deliberately asked her to take a selfie so she could get a photo of Se Yoon, which she would send to the mysterious Mithra guy. Without her realizing it, Chan Hong, who was watching her because he was very suspicious of her, he suspected that she had something to do with Pyong Su or So Jung's death. After taking the selfie, Meira went to an empty room to immediately send Se Yoon's photo. But luckily, Chan Hong came and snatched her cell phone. He forced her to admit that she was the one who used So Jung's account to post the scandal on an online dating site. Unfortunately, Mera didn't want to admit it and continued to deny the accusation. Not long after that, Se Yoon came and caught the two of them talking. She finally found out the truth. She couldn't think that her close friend had done something evil to So Jung. Se Yoon looked annoyed with Chan Hong, who had been secretly investigating So Jung's suicide case without inviting her. Hearing this, Chan Hong answered that he didn't want to involve her in this risky matter, but Se Yoon was still mad about it and just walked away. Meanwhile, after all her crimes were exposed, Myra, who was depressed, decided to commit suicide, but she was saved before it was too late. Chan Hong got a call from Si Yoon, who wanted to tell him that Myra was being treated at a hospital after a failed suicide attempt. He immediately went there and saw Myra, who had regained consciousness. Si Yoon was there accompanying her. She asked Myra to explain everything about her using So Jung's account. Myra finally explained everything confessing that she was very jealous of her and So Jung's close friendship which made her feel shunned by Se Yoon, so she deliberately made a scandal about So Jung. Even so, Mera didn't know that all her actions would end like this and regretted her actions which made So Jung commit suicide. Meanwhile, Don Hyuk went to appear to look for Pyong Su. There he saw some delinquents from many schools including Dae Yong and they were gathered by someone he knew very well. He was Sung Pil. He didn't know that Sung Pil had become Pyong Su's lackey. The next day, Don Hyuk met Chan Hong to tell him what he found about Sung Pil. Hearing this, Chan Hong intended to report this case to the police, but Don Hyuk stopped him because reporting this case to the police wouldn't solve it. Chan Hong still insisted on reporting it to the police. Don Hyuk got angry and immediately hit him, but fortunately, Don Hyuk quickly realized his mistake and immediately apologized to Chan Hong. Later when they were sitting, they both saw the name of a cafe that resembled the one that was written in So Jung's post, and out of curiosity, they went into that place to check it out. But when they entered, they were shocked because the place was messy. They realized that it was Pyong Su's hideout where she trafficked the women. Soon, some thugs came and attacked them. Pyong Su grinned to see them recklessly entering her hideout. She then forced Don them to tell him where So Jung's cell phone or she would kill them and sell Si Yoon. Unexpectedly, Pyong Su had kidnapped Se Yoon and she would let them go if they gave the cell phone she promised to release the three of them from this place. Hearing this, Chan Hong intended not to tell her but because there was no other choice, they were forced to tell her that it was kept in Don Hyuk's dorm. Pyong Su immediately ordered Sung Pil to take it. When Sung Pil arrived at Don Hyuk's dorm, he immediately opened a box to take So Jung's cell phone, but instead, he was touched when he accidentally saw a photo of himself with Don Hyuk, which was kept in that box. All this time, Don Hyuk still considered him a friend, even though he had betrayed him. Somewhere else, Kyung Pyo was trying to cheer up Myra, who was depressed, but his efforts were in vain until he suddenly expressed his love for her. Suddenly, Kyung Pyo got a call from Chan Hong's mother, who wanted to ask about her son's whereabouts. Hearing this, Kyung Pyo immediately looked for him. Meanwhile, Sung Pil had just returned to headquarters to hand over So Jung's cell phone to Pyong Soo. Pyong Su then ordered her lackeys to immediately destroy the cell phone to get rid of any evidence of her illegal business. 
She then let the three of them leave as she promised, but before leaving there, Don Hyuk asked her about So Jung's death. She got annoyed because she didn't know who the person who posted using So Jung's account. When they left, they met with a person with a tattoo on his left leg and Don Hyuk immediately hit the man. Not long after that, some more men came and immediately attacked them, but luckily, some pill appeared and helped them. He told them to get out of there immediately while he bought some time. They finally escaped the place. Since it was late, Chan Hong decided to take Se Yoon to her house. But Se Yoon refused because her parents would definitely scold her if some guy took her home. When Chan Hong got home, his parents immediately asked what happened to him since he was all bruised, but Chan Hong remained silent because he didn't want his parents to know that he had been beaten up by Pyong Su's lackeys. His parents suspected that his son had been beaten up by Don Hyuk. His father got angry and intended to go look for Don Hyuk, but Chan Hong told them not to interfere in his affairs and his parents fell silent, shocked by the change in their son. The next day at school, Chan Hong was very surprised when the police came to arrest Kyung Pyo. He was confused because he didn't feel he had done anything wrong, but unfortunately, the police still arrested him. Apparently, he was arrested on charges of Mithra's fake account, which he created on social media. He denied it because it wasn't him. The police didn't believe him and even immediately put him in a cell without any follow-up investigation. Not long after that, Shen Hong and his friends came there to visit Kyung Pyo. Thankfully, they still trusted him. Don Hyuk and Chan Hong were suspicious that someone had deliberately slandered Kyung Pyo and this was strengthened because the police arrested him without a warrant. At the same time, Pyong Su was calling the police to immediately transfer Kyung Pyo to another prison. It was revealed that she deliberately ordered the police to arrest Kyung Pyo to threaten Chan Hong and his friends who dared to disturb her business. Kyung Pyo's arrest had become the talk of the school. They couldn't believe Kyung Pyo, who was known to be a nerd, could bring shame to the name of their school. Chan Hong was speechless. He realized what So Jung had felt when she became the talk of the school. He immediately shouted at the students to stop talking about Kyung Pyo. After that, Chan Hong met Don Hyuk, Meira, and Se Yoon to find out who the real owner of the account called Mithra. Myra explained that she had received a threatening message from that account, asking her to get photos of female students from the school. Knowing the account knew about her could only mean that the owner was one of the students. In the afternoon, Se Yoon went to the place where So Jung's ashes were kept for a pilgrimage. She accidentally saw a suspicious man watching her. So when the man left, she immediately followed him to find out who the suspicious man was. She was very surprised to find out that the person was Sung Do. She asked why he watched her, but instead of answering, Sung Do took out a knife to threaten her. This was where all the puzzles were answered because it turned out that the owner of the account they were looking for was him. Not only that, he also admitted that all this time he had always sent photos of students at the school to Pyong Su. Of course, Si Yun was surprised because he didn't expect a nerd student like him to be the mastermind behind all these crimes. After explaining everything, he immediately went to Pyong Su's hideout to provide information on the next victim. Si Yun was still curious, so she followed him to Pyong Su's hideout, but suddenly, someone grabbed her. Luckily, it was Chan Hong and Don Hyuk who happened to come there too. The three were very surprised when they saw Sung Du there trying to hang himself. Seeing this, Don Hyuk immediately saved him as he didn't want him to just die like that after all the crimes he had committed. Sung Du suddenly took a knife and told them not to get any closer. He told them how lonely he was and how jealous he was of their friendship. He also felt very tormented because of Daeyang, and that was why he deliberately gave all the students information to Pyong Su so that he could see the students suffer as he did, but even so, he really regretted his actions. After saying everything, he tried to stab the knife into his neck, but Don Hyuk immediately ran to stop him. Sung Du cried, regretting all his actions. The next day, the city was shocked by Pyong Su, who was arrested by the police. On the other hand, Don Hyuk was packing his things because he returned to his parents. When he was packing, Chan Hong came to say goodbye to him. The two of them hugged. After the serious case they were facing, Don Hyuk and his friends could finally return to living peacefully and happily. Kyung Pyo was released from prison because he was innocent. The five of them held hands and promised to support each other.